this again. All right, a little review. When can I use the factoring method? When it's factorable. When it factors. It's kind of logical, right? If it doesn't factor, don't stress yourself out trying to use the factoring method. You're wasting your time. When can I use the square root property? When something is squared. Something squared equals a number, number, right? But I got some use for you. The vast majority of quadratics are, number one, not factorable, and number two, are not expressed as something squared equals a number. So methods one and two only work, number one, when it factors, number two, when it's something squared equals a number. Use them when those occasions arise. But keep in mind there are going to be lots of occasions in which they don't arise. And I need some other methods for that. Here's the next one. This is the completing the square. But any of you guys are familiar at least with completing the square? You've done it. In, you've done it at least. Maybe you don't remember anything about it. Seven of you willing to admit that? Mm -hmm. All right. Huh? Let's just do a little review. We already looked at one of these guys. Looks like this. squares came from and how they come about. Let's start very simply, like x plus 3 squared. If you are wanting to find out what's x plus 3 squared, you could list it side by side and do the FOIL, right? F-O-I-L, and you'd get, for the F, you'd get x squared, you'd get plus 3x, you'd get plus 3x again, you'd get plus 9. That x squared plus 6x plus 9 is what we call a perfect square, or a perfect square trinomial, or a perfect trinomial square. Take your choice. Make another. Notice the O and the I are always identical. And a significant fact to note about your multiplication of binomials is the O and the I are always identical. If you square something, the O and the I are going to be identical. So what I get for my middle term is twice the product of these two numbers. x times 11, 11x. Double it, 22x. x times minus 7, minus 7x. Double it, negative 14x. 
X times 3, 3X, double it, 6X. The O and the I show up identically, so you basically double that quantity. That gives me enough information so that if, if I have the first two parts of a trinomial square, I ought to be able to come up with the third part. For instance, if I just gave you If I gave you that and said, what's the third term to make this a perfect square, could you come up with it? 64. How many would think 64? You'd be right. How would you get that? Anybody got a strategy? You have to. Half what? The middle term. Okay, so you take half that coefficient. And the reason you're taking half of it, remember the O and the I are double? So you're taking half of it to get back to the, the basic. It's eight. And what do you do to eight? Square. Square. You get your last term. The last term will always be positive because you're squaring something, right? Hey, I got a perfect square. Oh, by the way, if it is a perfect square, it's something squared. Can you tell me what squared it is? X plus A. It is X plus A. Here's how you do it if you got a perfect square. Square root of the first term, sine of the second term, square root of the last term, square. Every term contributes something. Square root, sine, square root. Okay, do it again. What's the constant term going to be? What's it going to be? How do you get it? After this guy? It's 10. We'll square it. Square it. Always plus. Absolutely. I know you can say minus 10 squared if you want it to. If you're going to square it, it's going to get something positive, so it really doesn't matter. Hey, if that's a perfect square, it's something squared, what? X minus. Very good. X minus 10 squared. Yes, sir? It's up to you. We're basically doing the absolute value of it, just the number itself. Because if it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter when you square it, it's going to be positive. Uh, yeah, you could. So it's negative 10 squared. Whether you, whether you just look at the absolute value, 10, or whether you look at abs the absolute half of negative 20, negative 10, when you square it, you're always going to get a positive number. So either way, you'll get a positive number. Can you fill in that blank? So you recognize the square roots, x and 12. Multiply them together, that's 12x. Double it, because the o and the i, 24x. And that's equal to what square root? X plus 12. So we're going to be completing these squares and then recognizing them as something squared. In every one of these problems that we're going to be looking at under completing the square. Okay, everybody ready? Let's look at one out of the text, number 39 on page 117. It says, Solve by completing the square. Okay. 